and welcome back to North Fork. I'm Derek. Thanks for joining us today. So today we're down here along our road and we're going to be cutting down this dead ash tree. Uh, it's right along the road but it's a Tuesday afternoon uh, in the summertime and we don't get a whole lot of traffic up here so should be able to drop it and uh, not have too much trouble getting it cleaned up before anybody comes through. If they do they'll just have to wait a little bit so I can get it off the road. We've got the wood truck down here, we've got the log splitter, we're going to try to cut the tree down, buck it up, split it and go right into the truck. Usually I throw it in the truck and I'll split it later up at the house, but um, right now we're just gonna we're gonna do this. I uh, just want to get this tree down, get it cut up into lengths. The wood's gonna be for a uh, fireplace from the winter time. I'm gonna cut them short. It's 16 inches long, and they're gonna be for this this fall this winter. All right, give you a little shot of the tree. This is the tree right over here uh, on the left side of your screen, over my right shoulder, and uh, as you can see, it's dead. Um, all the bark's off of it. So it shouldn't be any problem. It is leaning right towards the road. That's probably the way we're going to take it. Uh, we're going to take a look at it once we get the chainsaw and everything on here. So um, yeah, let's just get to work. So as I maybe have mentioned before, you heard me mention is that we need more firewood for the wood stove in the living room. It's not a primary source of heat. We usually heat with a wood boiler, um, but we need some, some more short wood for the wood stove. So we're going to be cutting that up and using it this fall. Usually I like to dry my wood till it's pretty dry. This stuff won't be as dry, but using it in the fire in the wood stove shouldn't be much of a problem. All right, so another look at the tree right here. This is the tree, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's leaning right across the roads. So there's a little gap in the trees right over here, so that's where we're going to end up taking it. There's actually a couple trees up in there that I pulled out a couple years ago. So that's where it's going to go, right across the road, hopefully right into that gap. Alright, so there you go. Drop the tree down. Sometimes I'll just drag it off the road with the truck, but I think this time I'm just going to mark it and start bucking it up, and uh, hopefully nobody comes. So, it's a good drop. It did get caught up in that one tree a little bit. Um, my notch may have been a little bit off, but hey, it landed fine. It came down fine, so we're good to go. Let's get it marked and cut up. Using the Mingo marker to mark 16 inches uh, works really well, so this is a good tool to have.
All right, so I got that all split up and it's getting dark and it's time to go inside and get something to eat. So the truck will sit right here. All this stuff can sit here until tomorrow. Uh, then I'll stack it on the porch here and get it ready for the winter time, get it dry. And... So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. me the whole time. You're a good puppy. You're a good doggy, aren't you? Yeah, you're a good puppy.